Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be presenting Lesson 10 for February the 5th, 2023. We begin a new unit today, Unit 3, entitled God's Call and Its Responsibilities. And our topic for today, taken from our adult quarterly, is Wisdom and Foolishness. Our devotional reading is taken from Psalm 25, uh, verses 1 through 15. Our background scripture is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, uh, verses 18 through 31. And we'll be studying today 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, uh, verses 18 through 31. Our key verse reads, God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him and that's taken from first corinthians chapter 1 uh, verses 28 and 29 from the niv translation our lesson aims today number one is to contrast god's wisdom with the foolishness of people Secondly, to affirm the wisdom in following Jesus Christ. And then thirdly, to perform actions accordingly as you are strengthened by Jesus. We have three outlines that will be a part of our lesson today. The first one is entitled, By Foolishness. The second outline is entitled, By Faith. And then the third outline is entitled, By Frailty. And we certainly thank and praise God for being able to share God's word with you, uh, being able to encourage you. Uh, we always admonish you to uh, get your Bible and be prepared to uh, jot down a few notes that we want to share with you today uh, from the book of 1 Corinthians um, chapter 1 verses 18 through 31. And we would encourage you to read all of chapter 1 just to get um, a broader picture of what we will be discussing today. But we have quite a bit of ground to cover, so uh, we'll get to the biblical context and then we'll start in on our outlines. So let's study together. The biblical context is as follows. Paul writes that the cause of the divisions within the church is a general misunderstanding of the heart of the gospel the message of the cross you can see that in first uh, Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 and then chapter 3 verse 4 so what does it take to deliver the gospel effectively impressive titles and degrees a great voice a winning personality superior intelligence no, the message of the gospel does not require any of these. God's approach is not like the world's way of thinking. Unlike uh, the world, God never seeks to impress. Souls are not won to the kingdom because of the impressive qualities of the messenger or of the hearer. The gospel message is not reserved for intellectuals. Many Jews and Greeks rejected the idea of a crucified Savior. They preferred one who appeared powerful, influential, and wealthy, a Messiah who would be a conqueror of enemy forces and nations rather than a commoner to be humiliated and crucified. So setting aside such human expectations, uh, Jesus came for the purpose of giving his life to pay the penalty of human sin. It is the wisdom of God to use that sacrifice to justify sinners. So without faith in Jesus, the human mind can neither fathom God nor approach him nor receive eternal salvation. So we want to be able to uh, unpack this lesson uh, as the uh, the outline of this book uh, or what it sets forth uh, really deals with uh, worldly versus Christian living right 
And so we want to be able to understand the context of this lesson that uh, these particular converts in the church at Corinth at the time of this writing, uh, they were new to the faith, but they struggled, right? These converts struggle uh, with their degraded past. So uh, their carnality and spiritual immaturity needed patient instruction uh, on the part of the Apostle Paul. And I, I just want to help us to understand that it takes time uh, to make a Christian. It takes time. Uh, and so now that we understand that uh, there were divisions in this church, there were factions, if you will, uh, and one of the things that, that they were really struggling with, as we'll see, uh, going forward is is the message of the cross and that's something that we are struggling with even today uh, uh, many times uh, a lot of messages don't even include the cross it does it does not include the message of salvation it takes a different path uh, uh, but but I want us to understand that even if you hear right even though men reject the faith they are entitled to see the faith, right? They are entitled to, to, to the message of the, of the gospel of Jesus Christ to be exposed to them, uh, uh, whether they reject it or not. But I want you to look at St. John chapter 1, uh, the gospel according to St. John chapter 1, verses 10 uh, through 13, and that will give us some, some, some encouragement uh, around this context uh, as we get into this, uh, this, this first outline dealing with uh, by foolishness, and this is taken from First Corinthians chapter one, verses eighteen through uh, twenty-one, and I want to read this uh, from the NIV translation. The Bible says, "For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved." It is the power of God. Verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of uh, the intelligent I will frustrate. Verse 20. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of the world, uh, since the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. You know, as we go back uh, uh, to the Old Testament, particularly the book of Isaiah chapter 53, it was prophesied uh, when Christ came uh, that he would be despised and he would be rejected. What does that mean? Uh, uh, so the message, right? Not only was the messenger rejected, but also the message was was rejected. You'll see that throughout the book of Matthew as well, uh, beginning at job, chapter uh, 13, all the way through uh, to uh, chapter 28 that the, the king if you will the Messiah had been rejected uh, uh, and so was his message uh, but but we have to be able to uh, present the gospel the message uh, of Jesus Christ in a way that people can see the cross you know if we if we miss the cross uh, in our messaging uh, we have missed the path that leads to salvation, right? So, but Paul is explaining that the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, specifically the, uh, uh, the cross and the crucifixion, it is the power of God, right? But Paul confessed that God did not uh, send him to baptize people for the sake of making converts, uh, but to preach the gospel with simplicity without uh, diminishing 
the power of the cross of Christ that leads to eternal salvation. So it doesn't mean that Paul was belittling uh, 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 the message or, or uh, the topic of, of baptism, but he was redirecting the focus, right? Was to preach the gospel and to let and allow people to hear the gospel message, uh, which includes baptism right we there's a doctrine concerning that but Paul uh, was focused on the Christ uh, uh, on the cross and and Christ right so so we don't want to get hung up on things that cause us to miss the mark and 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 that's what had happened uh, if you read first Corinthians uh, you will see that, that there was some issues and discussion about who baptized whom, right? And so that that was a a a a a, a, a course of debate and 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 dissension and a lack of unity, right? So this is this is something that we need to be uh, mindful of uh, when we start uh, uh, thinking about uh, uh, what are we going to say. Uh, to God's people, but if you if you have your Bible, if you look at First Corinthians chapter one, I just want to read this here, beginning at verse uh, uh, ten, just to underscore what we just shared about uh, 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 baptism. Paul says here, First Corinthians uh, chapter one, verse ten. He says, "Now I plead with you, brother, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing." And that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind uh, and in the same judgment. But he goes on to say here in verse 11, For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I am of Cephas, or uh, I am of Christ. Uh, verse 13, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? So Paul goes on to say that he wished that he had not baptized any of them because they were using baptism and the discussion of baptism and it was causing a a, 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 a sense of, of debate and, and contention and disharmony and disunity among brothers and sisters in Christ and so again Paul is not belittling baptism uh, but he is exalting Christ Paul's primary duty was to uh, uh, was to preach the gospel uh, and evangelize, not to ceremonialize, right? And so we want to be we want to be careful about the things that we are uh, uh, that we may discuss or argue or debate about, uh, 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 which we totally uh, don't admonish you to do that. But we want to be able to, as Paul was sharing here, that 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 these individuals be of the same mind, right? That they have the same understanding uh, uh, about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So aware of Jewish expectations about the Messiah, Paul wrote that the preaching of the gospel is the powerful revelation of God's power to save, despite appearing as foolishness to those who choose to perish in their sin. So supporting this claim, Paul quoted Isaiah uh, chapter 29, uh, verse 14, in which God vows to astound those who have no true love or devotion for him and seek to know him based on empty religion, wisdom, and intelligence. You know, so there are some people with 
uh, 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 great minds, if you will, who have great understanding. Uh, uh, but God has taken all of these things into account. And I'm so glad that the gospel message is, is, is not designed to be so complex that you can't understand it or that you can't attain it. It, is, it should be presented in a way that you can uh, uh, believe it and that you can receive it and, and that you could be saved, right? But this is classic. Uh, in terms of people rejecting uh, the knowledge of God and seeking to establish their own way. I want you to look at Romans uh, uh, chapter 10 very quickly just to show you uh, uh, sort of the mindset that Israel had uh, about the gospel. Uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 1, Paul is speaking here. He says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. Verse 2, for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Verse 3, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of of God. And then verse 4 for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. And so this this continued theme uh uh, uh throughout the New Testament that people uh, assume that they know better than God. They seem that they uh, uh they assume that they have more wisdom than God. And so this is the mistake here that that uh, uh Paul is trying to get these folks to understand and again for the preaching of the cross is to them that are that that perish foolishness right so so we have to be careful uh, about what we are rejecting and and we should understand that if we can't uh, uh, digest Jesus Christ if you will if we can't receive his message or we reject the message or the cross or the message of of Calvary that we present then we reject the God that sent the Savior right so so it's 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 a it's a fact that we reject the the triune God uh, just because we think we are smart enough to to go another path to be saved another way outside of Jesus Christ then we miss the mark of the triune God and so we just have to be able to understand here that Paul is trying to help these young converts understand and I'm sure they had other people telling them things and adding to the things that they had already heard that made it challenging for them but we should be able to understand uh, uh, how difficult it is uh, for someone that gives their life to Christ and then they struggle to hear uh, the message because other uh, 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 philosophers and folk who claim to be intellectual uh, uh, are differing or have a different outlook on the gospel message and then it sometimes confuses uh, us in the church and then it causes uh, this kind of factions if you will this kind of division and then uh, they were not even on the same page if you will so Paul explains the different effects of the preaching of the gospel some anticipated a highly intellectual rendering of God's plan uh, others expected a royal messiah or military conqueror yet God sent a messiah who gave his life and rose from the dead and this is foolishness to those who have who missed the spiritual meaning of the sacrifice you know we we should always underscore and make sure that we know uh, uh, the message of the cross especially if we're going to present it uh, to someone else and we should understand the spiritual implications of the cross as well as the natural events of the cross so why did Christ need to come what was happening what was he coming to do what was the purpose of his uh, uh, dying what kind of death was he dying and why was it necessary uh, uh, for him to be 
uh, uh, punished in a way uh, uh, that that we know that the Bible says that that he was. Why did he shed his blood? What does that mean? All of these tenets of the cross we need to unpack so we can explain the message in clear, concise uh, 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 details to someone who needs to be saved. Uh, it's okay to tell people that they need to be saved, but why? Why do people need to be saved? Why are we preaching salvation? What is the significance of an individual giving their lives to Christ? And what are the repercussions if they don't give their lives to Christ? What is salvation? Do we understand the definition of salvation? So you see how I'm kind of unpacking all of these things to help us understand the gospel message that we have to present uh, to individuals uh, so they can grab it, so they can be saved, and then they can understand clearly if they re reject the knowledge of God, then what are the repercussions uh, of those things. So we need to bear these things in mind. I would also give you Romans chapter 10, uh, verses 8 through 10, one very familiar uh, passage to us all. But we want to be able to understand that 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 we need to be saved. I was looking at Romans chapter eight, and and then we'll get to our second outline because you know sometimes, and I know with with uh, 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 intellectual people and certainly those who uh, ascribe to be great philosophers or whatever, many times these these individual uh, people believe that their morals. Right, their good morals can keep them. Uh, that that somehow that they're able to to manage uh, without Jesus Christ, and we need to be mindful of that today. Let me show you something in Romans chapter eight, and I want to start at verse one because it's a very familiar uh, 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 verse to us. But I want to go just a little bit further. Romans chapter eight, verse one. The Bible says, "There is therefore now." No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Verse 2, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. This is what I want to show you in verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on the account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So what am I saying to you? It's important to understand that the Mosaic law Govern, trying to self-govern uh, your life, it, it, there, there was no power in that, right? The law is good, right? But the people, there was no power for the people to keep the law because that internal struggle in their heart and in their mind, uh, uh, they had no power. And so God allowed that system to run its course until the fulfillment of Jesus Christ. So God had to fix the problem by sending his only begotten son, Jesus coming into this world, living in the flesh, right? Without sin, right? And then he condemned that sin in his flesh. In other words, the death that he died, Christ Jesus, he died uh, 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 unto sin. And you'll see that in Romans uh, chapter 6, verse 10 actually all of Romans chapter 6 is good to help us to understand but but this we want to be free from sin from the indwelling uh, uh, aspects of sin but we cannot be free of sin you cannot keep yourself without the power of God that's where the message of the cross comes in right because we had a life of Christ we had the death of Christ we had the resurrection of Christ we had the ascension of Christ and what is key to us understanding the message is the power of the cross right there is power in the message of the cross there was there is power in the blood 
of the Lamb. And we have to come in contact with that power through our faith in the work of Jesus Christ so we can live the life that, that, that God requires of us to live. Otherwise, we're going to continue to keep breaking the law. We're going to continue to uh, displease God because we have that we don't have that righteous requirement indwelling in us. I hope this is making uh, uh, sense to you today, church. But the question is asked, think about your own conversion story. What moved you to finally accept the gospel? What did it take to win you to the kingdom? Those are good questions. And what moves us to give our lives to Christ is trouble, failure, disappointment, right? The inability to be able to live uh, apart from from our sins, right? We that those are the kinds of bridges that brought us to the cross, to the to, to uh, the message of the cross, to the the to the simple gospel message of hearing it, believing it, and allowing God to save you. And now the lives that we live, as I read to you in Romans chapter eight, now we live according to the Spirit. In other in other words, we live under the power and according to the power of God that is working in us to help us comply with the with the requirements that God uh, requires of those who believe in him and so we are a work in progress so it's it's about the message right we don't want to throw away anything uh, uh, concerning that but we want to be able to grasp the message uh, uh, in a way that that moves us to have experience with God and that's something that I was looking at as I was reading and studying this lesson it was never designed for you and I uh, uh, to to not have experience with God we have head knowledge we know the Word of God but we also have heart knowledge we have felt the power of God uh, and so it encourages us today that we are children of God. Our second outline is a critical one entitled By Faith. This is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 22 through 25 and again uh, from the NIV translation. The Bible says verse 22, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles but to those whom God has called both Jews and Greeks Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God verse 25 for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength but you see how many Greeks and Jews who had their own ideas and notions about the Christ and how uh, he would come were inclined to reject him, right? Some look for specific signs and wonders. Others look for a military conqueror who would bring about the restoration of David's throne. Still others uh, uh, preferred convincing intellectual arguments, right? Most rejected the idea of an executed criminal and the claim of bodily resurrection for them it was a leap of faith they were unwilling to take you know and we have to be careful about that listen all of us all of us have an opportunity again what it God is justified in in what he does right in response to our rejection uh, uh, of the gospel message why is he justified because he presented it, right? He he sent the message to you, and you decided for whatever reason, whether you were intellectual, uh, and, and we don't minimize these particular types of uh, 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 folk who have aspired and who have gained particular knowledge and, and wisdom in certain areas and, and all of these kinds of things. We don't minimize those things, but we have to be uh, uh, able to understand they don't produce salvation right and sometimes what what prevents us from being saved is who we think we are that's a mistake 
And when we think we are above the message of Jesus Christ, that we don't need to subject ourselves as we saw in Romans chapter 10, or we don't need to uh, 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 come down, if you will, uh, uh, off our high horse in a, in, in, in a way that we can receive uh, uh, the gospel message, then we have to be willing to accept the consequences of rejecting Jesus Christ. We know there will be consequences. The Bible is clear that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, which we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there will be, there will be consequences, right, for our rejecting uh, the knowledge of God, just because we can't see uh, 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 we can't rationalize, we can't believe what God says about his only begotten son. We can't believe or put any faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Many times we don't even want to hear it, right? We don't want to, we don't even want to entertain it, but it is the only way that you can be saved. So in their zeal to know God on their own terms, they can completely failed to grasp him at all knowing God begins with accepting that no one can comprehend the mind and processes of God you can see that in Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9 uh, but Paul preached the message of a crucified Christ a message that found its mark Watch this, only in the hearts of those who were ready to receive the fullness of God's grace by faith, right? It's one thing, and many times, I, and I've heard this over the years, perhaps you heard it yourself, that the preacher didn't preach a good message. Well, and, 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 and maybe that may have been the case, but if, if you are hearing the gospel message, and you don't mix faith with what you're hearing, then it makes that preacher look like he didn't or she didn't preach a good message when it was actually you who failed to believe in what you are hearing or apply faith to the message so as to be saved. So we have to be careful when it's time to hear, it's also time to believe, right? It's also time to accept uh, and many times when we are hearing, we are also rejecting in the same moment, right? So until those two things, the preaching and the believing come together, how do you expect that there would be salvation, right? So God's job is to send and present that message. Our job is to believe it, to cooperate, to to allow God to 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 uh, 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 work in our lives, and if we fail to do that, then it makes the gospel message. Listen, it was not because these intellectuals and uh, these philosophical people. It was not because they didn't hear the message. They heard it. It was preached to them, but they made a decision in the moment that it was too far of a stretch for them. Right. The Bible says, or our context says here, they were unwilling, right? And sometimes this is what we're fighting during the during uh, uh, the message, right? We're fighting your willingness. We're fighting your uh, uh, cooperation, and it makes the gospel message that much harder, right? Because we are hitting that brick wall. But until we start to accept and believe what the text says, take that message off of those pages and incorporate, incorporate it into our life. Believe what God says. It's his son that he gave. He should be able to know for certain who he sent and why he sent him. Right? We have no authority to question anything. Right? So we have to be mindful these things are still happening in our culture today. So for the caller of God, believing Jews and Gentiles alike, that which is a stumbling block for some becomes a stepping stone to God. In Christ, watch this, everyone who believes receives access 
to the power and wisdom of God. You remember what I just said earlier about when we reject the knowledge of God, we reject the triune God? Well, the Holy Spirit is a part of that trinity, right? He is our ally, right? He is that promise, helper, paraclete, right? That God will send uh, into that believer's life. You cannot live the Christian life without power. It is impossible. We need God's help on every hand so we can live the victorious lives uh, 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 that the Bible speaks about because we have power, godly power and wisdom, not the wisdom of this world, right, so much, but the wisdom that comes from above. James, I believe in the third chapter, talks about two wisdom, two types of wisdom, one from above and one that's on, uh, 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 from the earth. So, so we have these two things working uh, 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 in our culture today where men are using earthly wisdom to defy the divine wisdom and plan of God. You see? So this is why we, 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 we cannot move past uh, 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 various things in our lives because we have no power to do so because we have rejected the only one who came to deliver us from the uh, uh, power and the penalty of sin. Right? We need Jesus Christ. We need this message. Paul plainly stated that the foolishness of God is wiser, wiser than the wisest, wisest of men. And God's weakness is stronger than the mightiest of men, right? Those who believe to the point of confession and repentance are led by the Spirit from sin into a life of salvation. I want to say that again. Those who believe to the point of confessing. What are you confessing, right? You are confessing Jesus Christ, right? After you hear the message the preach message then you make a confession unto Christ unto Jesus Christ right and then we are also led to repent repent of what repent of our sinful way not the thing that we did per se the act but the nature right the nature of sin is why we sin the nature of sin is what we need to be delivered from. I hope this is making sense. Sometimes we can't stop doing a particular sin or the wrong because we have not been able to get to the nature of it. And sometimes when we stop one particular thing that is ungodly, we start doing another. It is only when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior that he addresses the nature of our sinful way, which is in our hearts, in a place that we can't get to, the seat of our affection, not the organ heart, right? But the, the seat of our affection, what drives that lust, that drives that appetite that drives that mindset is what we need to be delivered from James chapter 1 when you have time right I would also give you Ephesians chapter 1 all of that which will tell you in detail what happens to an individual once they hear the message of God uh, and and they believe that and how the Holy Spirit comes in and seals that individual that's that power that you need that's that power that we talk about in the message, right? Of the of the message of the cross that Jesus presents to those who believe. Again, we're talking about the triune God. This is a this is a uh, uh, this is tr this is trinitarian work going on in the believer. John chapter fourteen. When you have time, right? So I want to be able to just to uh, underscore this here. There has to be a confession, right? There must be a confession. The first epistle of John, chapter 4, when you have time. And then there must be repentance, right? Psalm 51, when you have time, right? And then we are led by the Spirit, which is what I just read to you in Romans, chapter 8, from sin, 
right and what we're talking about uh, again about this sin is a type of rebellious nature right sometimes we struggle to to uh, define sin but it begins with our rebellious nature our rebellious attitude toward the commands of God the things that we do come after the rebellion when we overstep right I believe David talked about that in Psalm 19 uh, 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 about keeping thy servant from, from presumptuous sin right when we overstep the commands of God then we are prone to do anything right when we have no governing principle in our lives then we will commit all sorts of acts but God wants to deliver if you know anything about the Old Testament and Israel's character they were always rebelling against commands that's what Adam did it's what Eve did they rebelled against instruction and then everything after that just came uh, uh, became a byproduct if you will of the rebellion right God is giving us instruction just like we're talking about now God is giving us uh, uh, Paul is saying here I'm presenting a message and people are rejecting that message what do you think they're gonna do after that All right sin is at the door the sin of rebelling against the, the instruction of God will always produce ungodly behavior it always will right and we know this to be true right we see it happening in real time but again by his wisdom and might God guides and empowers them to overcome future obstacles and challenges God guides and empowers us right this is what makes us overcomers in the world that we live in that we used to be a part of but we are now in this world living victorious lives because of the message of the cross and because of the power of the cross because of the power of God working in our lives that we're able to live victorious lives and people look in awe at us and say well hey wasn't you the person that just lived like this and wasn't you the person that used to be a yes I was that person but now I'm a new creature in Christ right and then we have to be able to witness that how did how did that happen and then you it's incumbent upon you to tell the truth tell the story don't boast about what you did but be be sure to tell them and if it had not been for the Lord in your life where would you be right lastly by frailty first Corinthians chapter 1 uh, verses 26 through 31 and again for, from the NIV translation the Bible says brothers and sisters think of what you were when you were called right not many of you were wise by human standards not many were influential not many were of noble birth but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Verse 28, God chose the lowly things of this world and despised and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Verse 30, it is because of him, right, that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom right wisdom from God that is our righteousness holiness and redemption therefore it is written let the one who boasts boast in the Lord right Paul is very clear right think about who you were think about where you were think about what you were had nothing to do uh, with your standards your influence your noble birth right but God had nothing to do and this puts us all on the same playing field right if you will this puts us all on the same page that puts us in a place of unity 
where the church at Corinth had disharmony and factions. Why do you have that when all of us have been saved by the grace of God? Why are we boasting about who we think we are when it's clear that the Lord saved you just like he saved you? It had nothing to do with who you think you are. It never will. It always has been because or but God. God chose you. Right? As foolish as we were. God chose you as weak as you were. Right? God chose us as shameful as we were. God chose us as low as we were. Right? And the despised, right? God chose us, right? Sometimes if you, if you just take a minute and look back over your life and see the, see the course that you were on before God stepped in, right? It is a very humbling experience when you think about the fact that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, that always keeps me grounded. So that makes the past relevant. Right? In a sense that I'm using it to glorify God. Lord, I thank you for saving me when I was without strength. Lord, I thank you for saving me and, and, and saving me for where, from where I was and from doing. You know, you know the story better than I do. But I can only think about my life. And I'm thankful to God that it was so dark in my life. But God brought the light of Christ through the message to my heart. And applied it to the place that was giving me fits. To the nature of the problem. To the root, if you will. Which was my sick heart. And God saved it and restored it. Did the same thing for you. Did the same thing for you, my brother. Did the same thing for you, my sister. Why can't we see that together? And why can't we preach that together? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for opening up our eyes to see your greatness. The greatness of the cross, the greatness of the Messiah, the greatness of the blood that was shed at Calvary. God, we thank you for the, this simplistic message that you brought to our lives today. That, that Jesus, he did it and he paid it all. He finished the work. Paid that price for all of our sins. The one that, 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 that we did in the past and the ones that we commit in present day and then the ones that we might commit in the future Jesus paid it all God we thank you for such a such a wise plan to bring us out of darkness into this marvelous light God and I just pray that you would help us to preach the same gospel help us to present the same simple message to those who need you most that we not uh, put yokes on their necks that they are unable to bear. That we would present the message in a way that men might be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. We just thank you today that we have been the recipients of so much loving kindness, so much grace, so much mercy. We were not deserving of it. But by the grace of God, we have been able to receive. God, I pray for each and every household today, every condition, every circumstance, God, that keeps us from allowing you to help us and to help us uh, uh, come to the knowledge of the truth. We bind these conditions in the mighty name of Jesus. We rebuke any enemy that comes against this message in the name of Jesus to, to, to bring something other than then the gospel message of Jesus Christ. We bind it in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you will continue to dispatch those representatives to the place, to the heartbroken, to those who have lost their way, that they might receive this message. Give us receptive hearts and minds, God, in the name of Jesus, to not only hear the gospel, but to believe the gospel and receive. 
in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you, saints. I love you. Just know that we are praying, that we are praying. And I want to particularly reach out uh, and just to say to those of you that are witnessing for Jesus Christ, keep it simple. Keep it plain. Put it on a level that everyone can receive this great salvation. And until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.